Part two of this video, we're gonna break down four shots with an emphasis on bag physics and throwing technique. We'll break down the cutter bag, a get around bag, a drag bag, and finally, the roll bag. By no means am I an expert. I'm a mechanical engineer by trade, but all that does for me is nerd out on technical terms and have a base sense of what physics are going on. My theory is heavily based on observations from thousands of hours on the boards and talking through some of these ideas with some of you OG baggers out there. Let's kick it off with an illustration of a bowl sliding and rotating down a flat surface, which shows the curling phenomenon, or in cornhole terms, the cutting, just like we see on the boards. Here we go. This is what happens to every object on the earth except for those out on the ice curling. There's some weird stuff going on. That stone actually cuts in the opposite direction to find physics. But just like that cup, the philosophy applies to our bags on the board. Let's run through some quick terms, uh, then we'll cut to some live actions on the boards and break these down. So a flat bag. A flat bag is when your bag approaches the board parallel to the earth. Flat bag. A tilt bag is when the left or right side is lower than the other. Tilt left, tilt right. Front and back loaded. Same idea, the front or the back is lower than the other. So you have a Papa Willy for back loaded and kind of nose diving for a front loaded. Friction, friction is that force between the bag and the board that's gonna cause the bag to slow down or change direction. You've got the leading edges and the trailing edges that we learned from the previous video. This is your leading edge, that front edge, and this is your trailing edge, the back edge. Let's cut to the boards and explain all this further. First up, we're going to baseline with a flat bag. Let's pause this bag at the top of its profile. Here the bag is perfectly flat to the ground. As we approach the board, we end up with a flat impact to the board. What this does for us is the bag stays true to the hole. We learned in the bowl example that this bag should be curling. In fact, it is. However, the distance we are sliding is four foot max in cornhole. If the bag was allowed to slide much further, we would have observed the curling phenomenon. Also, what is happening is high bag profiles don't slide enough stopping before curling occurs. So for the game of cornhole, a flat bag stays true to the hole. We'll break down the science of a cutter bag next, which shows that curling phenomenon. For those of you out there wondering why my perfectly straight bag to the hole cuts away from the hole, you are not throwing a flat bag. Next, we'll break down the cutter bag. Look at this bag, it is not flat. Here is your angle of tilt. We won't get into grips and releases in this video to achieve this tilt, but observe the bag is tilted low side to the throwing hand. This would be the opposite for a right-handed thrower. Also notice we see the white writing on the top of the bag. A cutter bag is also front loaded. As the bag approaches the board, the bag impacts both on a tilt and front loaded. What this is doing is significantly increasing the coefficient of friction on that leading edge, forcing the bag to cut in the opposite direction of rotation like we saw in the bowl example. Also, when the bag impacts, it quickly transitions from a tilt position to a flat position shifting the momentum of the bag towards the hole. These three elements working together generate the cutter. For a left-handed thrower, a cutter moves right. Inversely, for a right-handed thrower, a cutter moves left. Think of it this way. A cutter moves to your non-throwing hand. One last thought. You must throw a cutter bag sticky side down. This maximizes the coefficient of friction, drastically increasing the angle of cut. We'll break down the get around bag next. Unlike the cutter bag, we need a flat bag. Observe the flatness. As the bag approaches the board, our landing spot is in line with the hole right behind the blocker. Notice we are coming around the opposite side of the blocker as we did with the cutter bag. For a cutter bag, you come around the throwing hand side of the blocker. For a get around bag, you come around the non-throwing hand side of the blocker. Two things are going on here to get around this blocker bag. The first one is a theory that could only be tested in the lab. My thought is, instantly after the bag impacts the board, it becomes weightless. Now with the solid core boards these days, the bounce is not seen, but the bag material is moving in the upward direction. We're creating contact with the blocker while the bag is weightless. So if you land too far short of the blocker, you've missed the time the bag was weightless because it has settled back to the board to slide. It then becomes a push bag instead of a get around. The second part of the physics going on is in the bag rotation. 
The bag acts like a gear rotating around the blocker as it makes contact. Because the bag is weightless, there's almost no contact with the board to slow down rotating around that blocker. In summary, throw a flat bag in line with the hole and land just behind the blocker. A final thought, throw a sticky side down so not to blow through the blocker too fast and adjust throwing height of the bag based on blocker proximity to the hole. Here we have the drag bag, one of the most exciting throws in the game. There's no science to an open hole air mail, just put the bag in the hole. When there's laundry on the board obstructing the hole, there is some strategy and science involved. For a drag bag, specifically like the one here where a small portion of the fabric is over the hole, get your bag as flat as possible with sticky side down. You're maximizing the friction and surface area or size of that bag coming into the hole, giving you the best chance of grabbing the material of the bag sitting on that hole. On the other hand, if that bag sitting on the hole is your opponent's bag, consider a slick side airmail, reducing the friction, allowing your bag to slip past easier, giving you the airmail and leaving your opponent's bag on the board. Secondly, a highly skilled bagger is aiming not just at the hole, but at a side of the hole. Here you can see a perfect airmail still missing the drag bag, but if you contact the drag side of the hole, you will successfully complete the drag, maximizing your points. The last bag we're gonna break down is the roll bag. Let's pause here. What is highlighted in the video, we're going to call the Colorado roll bag. The Colorado roll bag is max tilt, acting like a wheel, rolling over all the laundry on the board into the hole. Strategically, this is a good bag choice when your opponent's bag is sitting on the hole, like shown, allowing you to get into the hole without dragging your opponent's bag like the drag bag airmail we just saw. Another roll bag, also known as the flop bag, is way more accurate and more achievable in higher humidity areas. This bag is thrown extremely back loaded with the leading edge in a Papa Willy position. On contact, the trailing edge or back edge of the bag sticks, forcing the front of the bag to endo like flipping over the handlebars of a bike, rolling end over end into the hole. This toss works way better with certain types of bags. There's something going on there that I can't make sense of yet. For low humidity conditions, like we see in Colorado, we are left with the Colorado roll bag to achieve the same result. That's gonna close it out for now. Hopefully some of you out there either learned something or for others it solidified thoughts you were having about the game. Again, these are just theories I'm throwing out there. Any other theories are graciously welcome. We're all trying to figure out this complex game. I look forward to seeing you all out on the boards later.